let us discuss now the moving coil galvanometer another 5 marks question that is expected let us first go through the construction of moving coil galvanometer you can see this is the schematic diagram of moving coil galvanometer here two strong concave poles are there so these two concave poles produce the radial magnetic field the main advantage of radial magnetic field is that the angle between the magnetic field lines and area vector is always 90 so that the formula for the torque b i n a sin theta in that theta becomes 90 so we can eliminate that theta term so b i n a directly we can write the formula so that is the advantage of radial magnetic field and radial magnetic field can be generated by concave magnetic poles now here this is the phosphor branch wire the phosphor branch wire and a coil is attached to that phosphor branch wire and here you can see concave mirror so this concave mirror will be useful to observe the angle that is a twist produced in the coil with the help of lamp and scale arrangement now here if you observe a spring is connected the spring the main purpose of the spring one it acts like a connector the second it gives or it produces the restoring torque now this the moving coil galvanometer uh, works on the principle that whenever current carrying coil is placed in a magnetic field it establishes torque so that is the main principle of the moving coil galvanometer now it is the other form of moving coil galvanometer which is also known as western galvanometer the main difference between this western galvanometer and this moving coil galvanometer both are of course moving coil galvanometers only the main difference is here there is no concave mirror directly a needle it is attached to it we can easily find out the uh, twist per or the angle per unit twist how much shift it is there so now if you go through the construction of this moving coil galvanometer you can see here here inside a cylinder is there and you can see the copper turns are there so and a needle is attached to it so similarly here you can see the cylinder this cylinder what's the use of this uh, keeping the cylinder it concentrates the radial magnetic field and here you can see the concave poles so these are concave poles and then when it is connected in any circuit then automatically the current passes through the copper turns now this current carrying coil now it is placed in a magnetic field then experiences a torque whenever it experiences a torque this automatically the needle with the help of this needle you can find out it now let's go through the derivation of it now if i current is passing through it and b is the magnetic field and n is the number of turns then the torque produced torque tau is equal to b i n a sin theta where theta is the angle between the area vector and magnetic field b now as we have created the radial magnetic field theta becomes 90 when theta becomes 90 torque is equal to b i n a now as we discussed the spring provides the restoring torque which you can write it as 
the restoring torque T or torque restoring is equal to K times phi. So this is the second equation. Now when the coil is under the equilibrium this K phi where K is torsional constant this K phi is equal to B i n a. Now i is equal to k by b n a times phi. So here k is torsional constant. It is already constant. Now b is the magnetic field, n is the number of turns and a is the area of the coil. Now you can say that i is directly proportional to phi. So you can write i1 by i2 is equal to phi1 by phi2 and we can calibrate this galvanometer with the help of a known current and automatically by reading the shift or by reading that phi you can find out what is the current that is uh, passing through the circuit. So now <coughs> this here we have to define two terms. One is the current sensitivity. The current sensitivity is defined as phi by i. Now if you take this i then automatically this b n a by k. So now how do you increase the current sensitivity? So by increasing b magnetic field by increasing the number of turns or by increasing the area of the coil. But by increasing number of turns the instrument becomes very bulky. Now therefore there is certain limitation for increasing the number of turns. The next point is if you increase the area the instrument becomes larger. So there is again a limitation for this A. Now either you have to increase B or you have to reduce K. So to reduce K what we can do is this phosphor branch wire can be replaced by a quartz wire. So in that way you can increase the current sensitivity. Now if you want to discuss the voltage sensitivity that voltage sensitivity is nothing but phi by voltage or volt that is phi by IR therefore the formula for it will be B N A by K R because phi by I is equal to B N A by K. Now <coughs> what are the factors that affect the uh, voltage sensitivity again <coughs> same as the case but here when current sensitivity is increased it is not necessary that voltage sensitivity must be increased because there may be a case when you increase the number of turns then the current sensitivity is increased but by increasing the number of turns the length of the wire is increased by virtue of which the resistance is also <coughs> increased. Now if this resistance is increased if n by r if resistance is increased this denominator is also getting increased. So n by r if it remains constant then voltage sensitivity won't be <coughs> affected. So it is not necessary that current sensitivity is increased means voltage sensitivity is also increased. Now there are several questions that can come in this moving coil galvanometer. The very first question that why radial field is necessary. It is already discussed the radial field is necessary to make this theta to be 90. That is first point. How do we produce radial magnetic field? Radial magnetic field can be produced with the help of concave poles. That is the answer for it. 
Now, what is current sensitivity? How can you increase the current sensitivity? What is voltage sensitivity? What are the factors affecting the current voltage sensitivity? Now, the other question is, what are the different applications of galvanometer? Or how, why we cannot make use of galvanometer directly to measure the current? Because galvanometer is a very sensitive device so that we cannot make use of it directly. So, it should be used in the form of ammeter or in the form of voltmeter. When the galvanometer is connected with a small resistance which is called shunt, then this total setup is called ammeter. This ammeter in turn is connected in series in any circuit. So now if you say that If V is the potential difference, then and I is the current passing through it, then some current will be passing through this. Let us consider that galvanometer, the current passing through the galvanometer is IZ and the remaining current should pass through this shunt. So shunt protects the galvanometer because of its small resistance. Now, if you want to calculate the value of shunt as the two are connected in parallel, the potential difference or potential drop across these two must be same. Now, Ig is the current passing through it and if G is the resistance of the galvanometer, that must be equal to I minus Ig times the value of shunt where S is the shunt small resistance. Therefore, shunt can be calculated by Ig by I minus Ig times G. So, this is the formula based on which some numericals can be asked. Now, suppose if you want to make use of this setup is called ammeter. Now, how do you make or how do you convert the galvanometer into voltmeter? For that, you have to attach one high resistance. High resistance. Uh, in fact, the uh, resistance for in any ideal voltmeter is infinity. But practical purposes, we take that it should be very high when compared to the resistance of the galvanometer. Now, <clears throat> so this setup is called voltmeter. So voltmeter is a device to measure the potential difference across any two points in the circuit. Now, <clears throat> if uh, what is, suppose I current as it is in series, the same current will pass through in both the two. Therefore, V, the potential difference is equal to the current times the net resistance as these two are connected in series it must be G plus R. Now our aim is to get the value of R therefore G plus R is equal to V by IG. Okay. Now R is equal to V by IG minus G. So this is the required resistance high resistance to be connected across the galvanometer in series as such this voltmeter <coughs> is always connected in any circuit in parallel to find the potential difference across the two points in any circuit so this moving coil galvanometer we have discussed the construction then the demonstration purpose we can make use of it this setup Whenever current is passing through, this is a horseshoe magnet and this is the coil and over which the copper wind, the copper turns are there. Now when current is passing through, then automatically it will be rotated. And this torque B i n a sin theta as because we are creating radial magnetic field with the help of concave poles, it is 90. So restoring torque is K phi. Restoring torque is provided by the spring. So K phi must be equal to B i n a for the equilibrium condition. So with this I is directly proportional to phi. The current sensitivity is the ratio of the phi to the I and voltage sensitivity is phi to the V.
so these are the some of the important concepts that you must learn to answer the question that's given in cbse examination